The, n the knob fell out of here, so I can't make the head go up and down anymore. Freaking, look at this freaking piece of work. We're, we're piece of, it's a piece of work. I use poster tack because the rubber fell out of the thing and the, the oh my goodness. Speaking of what a piece of work, this is a painting that I quit because I realized when I got to this point that I would have to paint it a lot more in order to make it a successful painting. And I wanted to keep, it's painted on wood, I wanted to keep as much of the wood showing through as possible. Voila! It's done! Welcome to the Revelation Chamber. Cave Dweller, I'm here because I am, I just had a brainstorm. I realized that everybody I respect says something idiotic at some point. And so I'm probably included in that. So everything I say, you have to take that, you know, pound of salt that you throw over your shoulder and hope the demons don't catch you. And one example, I can't think of any examples where I've done it, of course, but one example that I encountered was the medicine man who started my psychedelic journey with an inebi ceremony, no medicine involved, said many amazing things. But he also says some things that are just like, come on, dude, you know what I mean? Let's just think a little harder about this. Uh, he sent a text to his mailing list about our desire for life and clinging to life is the beast because of carbon and the carbon's atomic weight is six and it's got six protons, six electrons, six neutrons. It's the number of the beast. And uh, I just think, well, you know, it's obviously not that number it refers to somebody's name that the author of the revelations knew, you know, they knew who this character was. He was alive at the time. It's a satire. It's a apocalyptic fiction. Sometimes apocalyptic fictions and prophecies resonate throughout time, but they're usually aimed at the people who are reading them fresh. Anyway, I just wanted to point out that every wise man is also a fool, and yet sometimes you just have to look, overlook some of these idiotic blunders, especially, and this is the hard part, uh, especially when they're directed towards you personally, which has happened to me. And eventually, you know, you just get sick of it and you move on. But sometimes it doesn't happen that much, and then maybe it's worth it, right? This, there's this weird balancing act, because it's never not going to happen. You're not gonna, never going to find one wise person who never blows it and who never does something that you find personally offensive. That's my experience. And if Jesus existed, he and I probably wouldn't get along, because I would, I mean, I might be like, come on, dude, lift some weights. You know, stop being such a pushover. Keep, keep rolling, keep Keep rolling, keep, 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 keep rolling, keep rolling. My life is uh, haphazard at best. It is non-linear. I'm going to say that is for sure. When I was, my, my career was at my its peak, it's Zenith. When I was the comics editor for the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Post, UWM Post, Kaz Prepolinus sent me this little zine showcasing his comic strip, Underworld. I want to share one with you. Comical Bunny. What's up, guys? The boss says we gotta draw you cuter. You're scaring the children. Hold still. His body's too long. How's that? It's cute. Okay, you can go home now. Illness, madness, and death are the dark angels who watched over my cradle and have accompanied me throughout my life. That's the price of cuteness, isn't it? It's also the price of when you're an artist and you just never get around to doing anything. Let that be a lesson to you. Meow.